Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to, let's see if we're working, welcome to the Coffee Run Live, take two of episode 400 and, no, 591. Now I can see the notification, I can see it in my feed. Oh my goodness, I have to tell you, thank God it is working today because that was yesterday, that was just a little bit shit. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of funny actually because I, I usually, what I'll do is I'll have my computer open and I'm like just sitting behind the camera there and I can see people coming on, hello Rebecca, this is more normal. It was so weird. I was like, oh my God, everybody hates me. Nobody's coming on live yesterday. And I know that that's not true. Um, <clears throat> but it was really funny because I'll often have people that will, that will jump in and jump out and, you know, listen to the replay and do a whole host of things. And yesterday I'm just like, I don't understand why not one person, not even one, one little person came on. I'm like, oh, well, you know, algorithms, technology, stuff and things. And I got into the vibe of like, just don't take it personally, Nicola, you know, just keep going. And so I jab it on for probably a good 15, 20 minutes talking to you, but you weren't there, making sure that the video was ready for the, for the replay and I could make sure that I could share it around everywhere and finish the whole thing. My husband was in his office over there, so he knew I was doing it. Not that I need the, you know, I don't need to prove anything, but it was just like, wow, this is so bizarre. Uh, I have no idea what happened. Obviously, it was a meant to be thing. There was some like, some universal algorithm. Let's not blame Facebook. Maybe it was a universal algorithm. It was like, you know what, Nicola, like they don't need to hear this today. They need to hear it on Wednesday. I don't know. Has that has this stuff happened to you guys? I don't think it's is it just me? I don't know. I know sometimes Facebook can be a bit glitchy, but this is just a bit bit weird, bit weird. So now that that is over and out of the way, and I thank you for um, missing me <laughs> yesterday. I really appreciate it. What I actually wanted to talk to you again about today are the three main types of entrepreneurs. Now, when I was, when I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking about this for a really long time. I've been work, I've worked with thousands of people over the years. You know, I've been, been in the business for now 11 years uh, and more actually. And it's the kind of thing where like you start to see, you see patterns in all of the things. I'm sure, I'm sure that you guys see this with your people as well, or in your audience or in your lives, or even with your friends, perhaps. There's always like similar things that sort of like ripple through. And for me, what I have kind of through through some research, through just listening and, and being the person that does all the coaching for many years, I realized that there are that there are three main types of entrepreneurs. So the first ones are the coasters. Now there's no judgment in any of these. And actually I think that we can learn something no matter where you fit. We can learn something from each of these different types of entrepreneurs right? There's no one is better than the other. It's just, it is what it is. So the first one is a, a coaster. So a coaster, not like what you would put your drink on, but the world is ready for your brand of awesome, by the way. The, the coasters are the kinds of people who are, that they will, they will get in, they'll do the things that need to be done, but they will just do the things that need to be done, right? They're not looking at uh, what else can we do there? They're kind of like, I guess, and, and you go through different stages where you'll activate these three different styles as well, right? So if you're in startup mode, you probably can't afford to be a coaster, right? You can't just afford to go, oh, I'm only going to do these three things today because that's all that needs to be done. That's all that has to be done. If you're brand new to business, brand new to creating a brand, brand new to doing the things that you do, you're going to be pretty on the ball with going, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. Whereas a coaster is a bit more of a person who is like, yeah, they're, they might be a little bit more laid back. Maybe they've already had some success. They may still identify as a high performer or a high achiever. And the thing is, is like they'll, they'll kind of just do what needs to be done and that's it right? Just do the minimum that needs to be done. Nothing extra, no bells and whistles. Like this is good. Like we've got this. The second type of, of entrepreneur are doers. 
Now, the doers will go, all right, this is what needs to be done. They get in the trenches and they will and they will do it well. And the way that I see the, the doers, the your doers are people who are kind of like, all right, I've got this happening and I've got this happening. What needs to be done? Okay, we're going to go and do this. We're going to do some extra things. We're going to get all of this, all of it happening. And, you know, we're just going to get shit done. Yeah, like the get shit doneers. That's, that's actually what I should call the doers. They're the get shit doneers. So that's level two. And then the next one are the all inners, right? So the all inners, these are kind of like your high achiever, high performer people. And, and the coasters can up level to the get shit doneers and then the, and they can up level to the all inners. But the, the high performers, like they will do everything that they possibly can. They are all in. Right? Yeah, the get shit doneers can absolutely get exhausted, Carmen. You're exactly right. So, like with your all inners, and, and when you're building and when you're growing or when you're going through transitions, sometimes it can be a big thing to go and you might drop back to coasting and then, like, depending on circumstances in your life and things like that. But here's one of the things. A lot of people get really frustrated. They get really pissed off. They can get a little burned out. They are, I guess like they can, uh, you've got, everybody's got really big dreams, right? They've got really big drivers. They know what it is that they want to get done. And the thing is, is that not so much the, not so much the first lot of people, but the second and the third group. So the get shit doneers and then the all inners, there are a lot of balls that get juggled in the air, right? They've got this and they've got this and they've got this and they've got kids and they've got businesses or they've got puppies or they've got like all of the things going on and they're trying to manage the business and they're trying to manage the money and they're trying to manage the health and they're trying to manage everything in the whole entire world and there's a whole lot of constant pressure. So what that can often lead to is some like self-talk around, oh my God, I've got all of this big, massive, long list of things to do. How am I possibly going to get through it? Um, or they get to the end of the day and they feel like they've, had, they've achieved nothing, right? So I'm a big fan of the planning system that I use, which you can, you guys can download this from the website for free of charge, actually. I've got it up there. Plan it like a boss, I think. Or may, I might have called it plan it like a motherfucking boss because... Why not? But I, anyway, so plan it like a boss. And what I've got in here is like I, I'll go in and I'll hand write extra things on there that I might have done and then I'll go and cross them off. <laughs> so there were things that I did yesterday in my, in my list of things to do that weren't on my list of things to do and I've gone and added them on. I should actually go and add some stuff on this morning with not just the scrolling but the other things that I was doing before I jumped on in here. So... That's one of the keys, I think, to really helping people who identify as a high performer, high achiever, to get to the end of the day and not be beating yourself up because we are all incredibly freaking good at it, right? I, well, I don't know about you. I know I am. I'm a freaking seasoned professional. I'm getting better though. Uh, I'm looking to retire from this actually. You know, I, I'm really good at getting to the end of the day and go, wow, like I probably spent far too much time doing that, or I could have spent more time doing this, or I shouldn't have done X, Y, Z, or whatever the case might have been. So what that can lead into, you guys know, right? And, and let me know that it's not just me, but it can lead to feeling not good enough. It can lead to going, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm not really cut out for this after all. It can lead you to getting a bit desperate at different times as well and seeking help and support from other service providers such as maybe assistants or virtual assistants or things like that that aren't the right fit. Now, I'm a huge, massive advocate. I have a virtual assistant. Uh, I had another assistant for a long time. I've got a VA and, and it's, it, they're awesome. They're awesome when it's the right fit, right? But what often happens is that when you when you land in this place of like overwhelm and constant juggle and and you know that nobody else can do things as good as you can, like that and, and often that means that you're, you're the the king of everything or the queen of everything, which is not a good thing in this particular instance. And so what happens is that you end up just being like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed and you quickly get somebody in and then it's not the right fit and then that's 
it's just, you know, it, you're putting out spot fires and then it, and then it just becomes really hard all over again. So there are four main steps that I want to talk you through today to help you. I just had someone ring my doorbell. So just give me one second. One second. Let's go. Oh, you got my hand. Hang on a sec. Are you waiting for the four steps? I know you're waiting for the four steps. It's going to be epic. Where are they? Oh, hang on. Hang on, guys. Hey, how are you going? Hey, how are you doing? I'm coming. Good. Um, Water heater? Yeah, that's right. All right. If you head down through that black gate, I'll mm -hmm. just meet you around the deck and I'll show you where it is. Sure. One second, team. He was going to walk through Dom's office. So this is where he was listening to me yesterday <laughs> while I was talking about this stuff. <laughs> Ziva. Okay. All, right. all right. So it's just in here. Yep. That's heavy. I can't help you move that. No. It should just lift up, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that. Do you need me for anything else? Um, just so you know where the switchboard is. Obviously, it'll be somewhere. Yeah, but... it'll be in the laundry. I'll go around and open that. Okay, peace. So now you get to have a little bit of walk through my house. So... What we'll do as we're talk, as we're walking, we'll walk and talk. So one of the things, the first step that you want to do, if you want to get rid of all of this overwhelm and you know everything else that's happening, the first step is to do a big brain dump of everything that you actually do throughout the course of the day. So this might be things like, oh, Sabrina, we're in my laundry. Things like planning. It's just in through here, and I've got the cupboard door open for you. Cool. Thank you. No worries. Okay. You can shut that. Oh, bang. <laughs> Check out my washing. See, this is just to show you that everything is not always perfect in my house. <laughs> so, maybe one of the things that you have to do every day is sorting out the freaking washing. Or and manage service people who are coming out to help you at your house or doing your blogs or doing your writing or there we go editing videos or doing all of the things that you that you have to do in your day so the big thing is doing a big brain dump one of the things that i would suggest that you do i created a tool um a little while ago where i and you guys can replicate something like this it's really simple to do where between the hours of, say, 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. or whenever it is that you get up, what are you doing within that hour, right? So making the bed, doing the dishes, getting the kids organized, brushing your teeth. Like document everything that you do in that particular hour and then go to the next hour and document everything that you do and then the next hour and then document everything that you do. So have a bit of a timeline and then that way you can actually go, Oh my God, <laughs> no, no wonder I can't find 10 minutes to do the blah, blah, blah thing or to do your study or to do whatever it is that you're looking at doing in order for you to be able to uh, accelerate and grow and, and do all of those things. Getting a brain dump out of everything that you need to do in your day and everything that you are doing in your day helps you to see that you're actually you know, that you're not lazy, <laughs> that maybe you're not managing your time well. But I know for me, I spent probably 15 minutes before jumping on here, just scrolling, just for whatever reason. Look at that person out there. Let's just go like that. Um, scrolling, I'm like, oh my God, Nick, stop that. We've got to get on and do the coffee run. So, you know, catch those times because then you can start to build in a bit more discipline. And that way, like you can still coast, but you'll find that you'll be shrinking the time in which you're coasting, right? If you're a doer and a get shit done, it means that you'll actually get more done in a smaller window of time. And this then creates a space for you to either bring in new projects if you want to do that, or have some time out, or go for a massage, or do any of those other things without feeling guilty, because often we feel guilty for that kind of stuff. The second thing, the second step in this is to get really big picture, right? So this is to help you 
reduce overwhelm, reduce procrastination, really make sure that you're feeling really connected with what you're doing, feeling more alive and more joyful and things like that. So get really big picture and fast forward yourself 12 months into the future and imagine that everything had worked out exactly the way that you wanted it to. What does it look like 12 months in the future to you? What are you doing? Who are you seeing? What, are you, what have you created? What have you spent the last 12 months doing? It could be things like you created your online course, your first online course. Maybe you started your business. Maybe you've drafted and written your first book. If everything had worked out exactly the way that you wanted it to, what does that look like? So that's step two. Spend some time really, I call this dream engineering. Spend some time dream engineering that because when we get stuck in the minutia, which is what happens when we're in the in the throes of everything, it's really hard to come back and go, hang on, like why the fuck am I even doing this anyway? Right? So that's the second thing. The third thing is then going, all right, these are the big things that I would love to have done, or maybe little things that I really want to have done and achieved and, and things like that towards the end of that 12 months that we talked about. What we now need to do is chunk that back. So what I mean by this is you we take our big picture goal and we go, all right, if I was to action something, take one step towards achieving that in the next 90 days, what is the first thing that I was going that, that I could do? What feels like the, the first, next, best required action or the next best step that I can take right now that would take me just one step closer to getting that thing or achieving that thing or doing that thing? If you want to have a holiday, you know, that, that's a big goal for many of us. Let's be honest, in 2021, after last year, we all haven't had holidays in the same way that we probably would normally perhaps. I know we haven't. So if, if 2021 is like you want in your, when you look at how everything has worked out ideally for you, you've had some time out, you've had a holiday. Great. What is the next best step for you to do now? It might be going and blocking in your, um, Hey Rebecca, it might be going in and blocking in the dates for your holiday right? It might be planning and working out with all of your children or your partner or your friends or whoever it is that you're going to travel with or wherever it is that you're going. And it could even just be to like somewhere two hours down the road. Like it doesn't have to be this big fandangled thing, but what's one step? What's the next step? Is it having the conversation, setting the dates? If you want to create your, if you want to write your book, say that you would love to have a book drafted or written by the end of that 12 month period, then maybe you should start planning it in the next 90 days. You know, working out what you might talk about, what the chapters might look like, what stories you might tell, what's the purpose of the book. You know, starting to bring these things to life. This is how we can actually be both high achievers, high performers, and actually feel like we get to the end of the day, that we've ticked the boxes, that we're getting stuff done, but it's also really aligned. And then the fourth step is one that is the most important, right? So we can all have the best laid plans. I could spend an hour planning my planner for the week and I could be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. But unless we instigate step number four, nothing freaking happens. Step four is implement, right? And you will do some of the implementation or you might outsource some of the implementation. Now, I mentioned before that I'm a huge fan of virtual assistants and I'm a huge fan of having support and help when you need it. So you might have somebody as a, uh, and it's got to be the right fit, right? Don't go into this half cock because things go wonky and that's just annoying for everybody. It's costly, both in time, in money, but more to the point, the thing that I hate about hiring quickly and it being not the right fit is it messes with my head because I'm sitting there and I get really fucking frustrated because people aren't doing the things that I really need them to do or that I want them to do. And then I start feeling really bad and then I have to call them out and then I have to fire them. And I hate that. It just sucks. So be slow to hire and fast to fire, right? It's one of the best things, uh, the best little mantras that I've heard in, in all of my time. Hire slow, fire fast. So 
The key to outsourcing is finding the right people. It means that you've got to know who it is that you need. It, it means that you need to know what, what jobs they're going to do for you specifically. What kinds of personalities are you looking for? And the tip here is you probably don't want someone like you. You don't need to clone yourself. You're, what you're doing is you're getting other people in to be your, your, your get shit doneers, right? That level two type person, right? You need a level two get shit done person to hire. You don't really need the, the ultra high performers because they tend to think uh, a bit more big picture and they get distracted a bit easily and stuff like that. So the four steps to really making sure that you're able to leverage no matter what how, no matter what type of entrepreneur you identify as, whether you're a co-star, whether you're a get shit donner, or whether you're an all-inner, we all have lots of similarities and they typically are feeling overwhelmed, having a lot on our plate, and we would all love more time to do the things that we would really love to do. More choice, more freedom, more clients, more money, more travel. <laughs> not just me, right? So they're the four steps. Step one is do your big brain dump. Step two is go really big picture. If everything had worked out exactly the way that you wanted it to, and we're 12 months in the future, what does that look like? What have you achieved? What are you doing? How are you celebrating? What have you done? The third step is chunk that down into actionable steps. And step four is implement. On that note, my friends, I am going to love you and leave you. I hope you have a rocking, awesome, and amazing hump day. Happy Wednesday. I will, of course, see you tomorrow. And I already know what we're going to talk about tomorrow because I had some a bit of fun this morning in, in, a, in another group that I'm in. I'm going to talk about some copywriting hacks for you tomorrow, which is going to help you with your lead magnets, is going to help you with everything that you might like to put out there onto the internet in terms of attracting the right kinds of people into your business uh, as clients, as potential clients. All right. So I'm going to love you and leave you. Have an awesome and amazing day. And I will see you tomorrow. If you are not registered yet for Visible Live, get your butts into that. It is going to rock your world. I promise you, if you hate it, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> you won't hate it. But if you do hate it and you get to the end of day one, you're like, you know what, Nick, this is really not for me. Let me know and I'll totally refund you. Otherwise, let's lock it in. Happening in June, the link is join.nicolamorass.com.au forward slash visible dash live. I will put the link in the comments very shortly though. Meanwhile, get out there, go help some people, have a whole ton of fun doing it. And remember that the world is ready for your brand of awesome. Visible Live is next month, Rebecca. Yes, 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 yes. I am so excited about it. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to be in Melbourne and then Perth and then Sydney and then on the Gold Coast. So get your butts in. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. It, it's, I've been running this event for nearly the last two years and it blows my mind what, what comes out of it. It's just, it's, it's the best thing since sliced bread. All right. Have a rocking day and I will see you tomorrow, if not before.